Following the news that a COVID-19 vaccine has been found to be 90% effective in preventing people from getting the virus, confidence in the markets, including the travel industry, has soared. So can we finally start thinking about booking a spring holiday abroad or should we still be a little bit on the cautious side? Simon Calder joins us now. Nice to see you, Simon. Um, so, interestingly, you know, we're talking there about looking into next yes. year. Um, what about like right now, nothing's changed, has it? No, and that is something to bear in mind. Of course, if you're in England, you're not going anywhere on holiday until the 3rd of December at the earliest. Wales, you can travel more freely within Wales, but not beyond Wales, and certainly nobody's going into Wales at the moment. Scotland depends on the tier you're in, and Northern Ireland has um, strong advice against avoiding all unnecessary journeys. So things are pretty much... Um, uh, off the table at the moment. And even when, in December, hopefully, infection rates have come down, we're able to travel again, there's still a whole list of things you need to be wary of. Um, the quarantine rule still applies to the vast majority of destinations. We've got a little bit of light. Um, the Canary Islands, uh, just three weeks or so ago, were put on the OK list, which is great. But then, of course, the travel ban came in for England, which uh, made all that difficult. So be, be careful and certainly you have to manage your expectations. Nobody wants to dream of a wonderful holiday escape more than I do, but just need to be careful. But we now you've got to bear in mind that you could go somewhere and get stuck there. Yes, I know that for a fact, because I was stuck in Egypt, for example, right at the, uh, uh, in the middle of March, um, I had to pay £700 to get out. And that's why I'm cautioning people to not have their, ex their horizons uh, extending too far. Yes, in theory, you can go to the Maldives, for example, but you might, you know, there's worse places to get stuck than that. Um, however, I'm saying, look, don't rely on long haul. If you're thinking Dubai, wouldn't that be great? Um, Florida, how lovely. I'd, I'd say look closer to home. So Spain, the Canaries, of course, um, the Balearics, um, Portugal would be lovely. Um, the it, Italy is where I'm hoping I might be at Christmas. But again, nothing is certain yet. And it's a really tough time for travellers, prospective travellers, and of course, the entire travel industry. So we are really looking for a spring holiday then, really, with a bit more guarantees. Have travel companies seen a rise in bookings? Oh, yes. Just in the past um, hour, I've been talking to the boss of uh, Jet2 holidays, and he said that as soon as the news came in, enormous interest, um, uh, people going online, people asking their travel mm -hmm. agents, you know, what will we be able to do? And of course, the answer is, we don't know for sure yet, but he has just um, uh, in the past hour announced a new base at Bristol Airport. So starting at Easter next year, there's going to be somebody else. They're putting planes coming in, um, thousands and thousands of holidays. Right. So the idea is, yes, start dreaming. Yes, start planning. Talk to your travel agent. Find out what's going to be possible. But at this stage, I'm not committing because I simply don't know what the world's going to look like. Mm. So a million vaccines a week. Fantastic. That would be great. Um, but there's quite a lot of people in Britain, and if you do a million a week, I'd, take it, I'd, I'd say if you start on the 1st of January, you'll finish around about Easter 2022. So you just have to see... And so, bearing in uh, mind also that, uh, that you're travelling out into the world and each yes. country has its own issues with the vaccine, with delivering the vaccine. Uh, yes. And so, you know, we may, we may be lucky enough to be able to get the infrastructure right here, but there will be some places in the world where it, it won't be as, as easy. Oh, sure. And, and of course, you need to be wary about putting too much pressure on, on, on health systems elsewhere. And of course, everywhere has got their own rules. So the Canaries starting next week, they're going to say, yep, Philip, we'd love you to come here once lockdown's over. Thank you. But you're going to have to have a, um, a PCR test uh, within 72 hours before you go. And then you can have a look around and find, oh, actually, that's going to cost me 150 quid and be a real faff. So the travel industry is hoping that these so-called lamp tests, which take an hour, they've sort of done it on the spot, are going to be the, the sort of cheap and easy way to solve that problem. We're all focusing, obviously, on COVID and the effect that has on our travel. But as of January, Brexit is the one we're going to worry about because actually that will impact as well. Yes, this, that, that, that's, um, what, six and a half weeks away now. Uh, 1st of January, that's when the transition period ends. And all sorts of things that you took for granted um, will end. So, for example, be really careful about your passport validity. Um, your passport might say, yeah, I'm valid for another year. But actually, under the uh, rules which will come into play, you might find that um, uh, it's not valid because it was issued more than uh, nine years, six months ago. There's a passport checker online that the government runs, which you can put in there. Mm. Remember, your European health insurance card will not cover you anymore. Um, it will if you're travelling out 
before the new year and coming back afterwards. But beyond that, you're going to need proper travel insurance in place. Driving licenses, you probably need one, maybe two international driving permits and you've got to sort out a green card for your insurance. So an awful lot to bear a in mind do, for new yeah. year trips. Um, one, of the, one of the things that makes it easy travelling uh, around the world is if you went on a cruise ship and uh, one of yes. the saddest sights has been all of these oh. uh, cruise ships moored around the coast, um, ghost ships, yeah. really. Uh, that also looks like an industry that's going to take a while to recover. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking a lot to the, the, the cruise industry. They are desperate, of course, to start people travelling again. Um, uh, you've got hundreds of thousands of people desperate to work on these things. Of course, they've got the logistics, which are incredibly complicated. You've got crew from 100 different countries, passengers from 100 different countries. Normally, that's wonderful. If there's a global pandemic, it's terrible. Um, you've then, ideally, on a trip, you might want to go to half a dozen Caribbean islands. Do they all going to want you? Um, and what about testing? What if someone tests positive? So they're mm. getting all their protocols in place. There will be tests for every member of crew, every passenger before they get on that crew. And I even just heard this morning that in um, Florida, they are setting up a test with people who can actually volunteer to be pretend passengers on a cruise to the Bahamas to try it all out. I'd love to do that. Unfortunately, we're not allowed into America. No, you can't do that. Right, we've got some questions for you. Bev right. says, where can I take my children on holiday that is fun and cheap? Oh, OK. Well, if we're talking about next summer, I would say fun and cheap has to be the Costa del Poland, the Baltic Riviera. Absolutely fantastic. When my children were younger, uh, we went and had a fabulous couple of weeks there. Just lovely. And look at sunshine. that. Yeah. Hot, yeah. hot and an amazing beach. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, basically the whole north coast of Poland is one long beach. It's great. And the prices are about half or a third of what you would pay um, in more celebrated um, holiday spots. I think we should, uh, we should ask here, I mean, having, having you said that, please don't say that to anybody else. Um, <laughs> let's keep this amongst ourselves. <laughs> don't tell anybody you've seen it here. It's just this morning, OK, that knows about <laughs> the Costa del Poland. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, Natalie says, uh, will holiday companies start offering vaccines as part of your holiday booking? Oh, that's a really good question, Natalie. I would say no, I very much hope not. You know, the vaccine programme has to be rolled out on the basis of need and, and, and priorities and so on. Anything which suddenly, you know, they, they said, oh, yeah, well, you have a fantastic holiday to, um, to, to, to Greece and we'll throw in a vaccine, that is diverting resources. So I hope that won't be the case. Of course, the converse of that is, will they say, um, yeah, Philip, you can go because you've had your vaccine. Sorry, Holly, yeah. you can't, you haven't. Mm. That's going to be tricky as well. We haven't even begun to start looking at that. What about ski holidays? Lisa says, is a skiing holiday possible this Christmas? It's possible, yeah, we just don't know. It, it might be that Italy opens up. I very much hope it will, in which case I shall be there and uh, I might see you there. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank very much. you.